coming back. What? What? Oh. You never know what they're going to let nah, you know. We, 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 we don't have no screen that's going on. Good thing for me. Yeah. <laughs> me too. Good morning and welcome to God's house. Did everybody sit in a different place to shake up pastor today? It's Nancy's fault. Would you stand? It's great to be in this house today. It's a beautiful day to serve the Lord. sacrifice on the cross that we might be free that we might have peace and have hope it's amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me I once was lost but now I'm found was
Surround me, Lord. 
freedom this morning, Lord. Fill this place with your presence. We adore you, Lord. We praise you, Jesus. Deserve the glory and the honor as we lift our hands and worship, as we lift your holy name. You deserve the glory and the honor as we lift our hands and worship, as we lift. even notice it but he's been good to you this week let's just praise him let's worship and magnify him this morning we bless your name lord we thank you we honor you we give glory to you praise your name praise your name praise your name in these uncertain times it's hard to find anything that's stable marriages every other one supposedly breaking up the homes are in disarray. Our children are being raised by iPhones and iPads and games. The television has greater impact upon us than the church. There's so many things in life to distract us, so many things to hold our attention. The days are coming when we're going to need God more than we've ever needed Him. And we better hang on to Him now. And the song we just sang said, You deserve the glory and you deserve the honor. Could for a few moments this morning, let's pray. And let's pray that God will touch us in a new way. That our hearts will be open to God. That our ears would hear the voice of God that our eyes would see what we're supposed to see, that our spirits would be healed. Would you join me in prayer? Father, we thank you this morning that we can call unto you and you said, I'll hear and answer.
and show you great and mighty things. We thank you that you know every need that's in this building this morning. You know what every person is walking through. You know what every circumstance is like. You know what every struggle, every trial, you know what they're going through. I pray today that your spirit would come and minister to your people. And I pray, Lord, that there would be an awakening in your church, an awakening in our hearts and our spirits and our souls. May we begin to cry out to you in new earnestness. May we begin to search for the depths of God and the richness of God and the greatness of God. May we recognize that you're our healer. May we recognize that you're our savior. May we recognize that you fill us with your sweet spirit. May we recognize that you're coming soon. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Now, Lord, every person in this building this morning that's suffering in their body, that's going through a physical battle, I pray right now that that body would yield to the word of the Lord that said, by his stripes, we are healed. May your spirit touch and move now. May faith arise as it's never risen before. May great grace touch every heart and every life. May your kingdom come and may your will be done. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Can you say amen this morning? Well, we're glad to see you. We want to take a few moments. You get around and shake hands if you feel like it. Now, the governor said this week we can just kind of go back to whatever normal is. I'm not sure we'll ever know what normal is again. But uh, uh, if you, if you uh, want to be cautious, that's okay. We understand. Fellowship a little bit. Be sure and put your tithes and offerings in the bucket in the back. God bless you. Let's, just, let's uh, fellowship a little bit.
is crowned with glory now. The Savior knelt to watch our feet. Eight to twelve years old. See Rebecca Pettis. Cost turned in by May 14th, 240. Turned in by June. July 12th to the 15th, 8 to 12 years old. See Rebecca Pettis. Cost turned in by May 14th, 240. Turned in by June 24th, 258. Late, 278. Paperwork due soon as possible. Here y'all, here y'all, July 9th through the 12th. That'll be a Friday through a Monday. See Emma Bell. Cost 215 if you turn in by April 7th. 30 if you turn in by June 4th, and it's going to be $250 if you turn in by June 25th, but the paperwork is done as soon as possible, please. What's the problem here? Hey, there's just so many things going on at University Church. I don't know what to do. I'll just choose one. You got the 39ers? On... No, you're not old enough for them on March 20th at the Cancun's. <laughs> I know you're a stranger in these parts, but I'd like to invite you to some things that we're doing here at the church. That sounds fun. I would like that. Okay. Well, we got Rebecca Pettis today, Connect Group, 5 p.m. That's an awful good time. You can try that out. Oh, that sounds very good. And I also hear that you have a Wednesday night Bible study that's really great. And Robert Shelton is preaching this week. Very dynamic in the spirit, I hear. Very good. Oh, yeah, Bob's great. We also do a prayer Saturday night every week. Very dynamic. Oh, that is all so good. I love this place. you got so many things going on. I can't wait to get involved here. It's going to be great. And don't forget. March and Mission Month, and Mr. Cartwright give big mission gift every year. Oh yes, where I come from, uh, we always are giving to the missions every year. Speaking of giving, Waxahachie Baptist Children Home, Easter Bastic Outreach. You got to bring donations of lobby items like board games, puzzles, candy, all that kind of stuff. It's going to be great. Crayons, that's going to be on March 31st, Wednesday at 7 p.m. Wonderful. Oh, that. That. <laughs> oh, there's one other thing I forgot to tell you about. March 28th, Palm Sunday, Kids Ministry Awards happen on that day. I hear that the kids uh, work very hard for these awards that they get every year. Yeah, darn right they do. I just love giving them kids these awards. They work so hard for them every year. We're going to do a song this morning. Uh, how many remember the couple called the Hawaiians way back before I was born? They used to sing a song. It's called, There is Someone, Someone in Heaven, Someone Who Really Cares for Me. We're not the Hawaiians, but we're going to sing it.
someone who really cares for me. Truly he is sweet and gentle, for all his love is all so free. Good morning. How are you guys doing this morning? Good. Okay, so I know a lot of you are probably familiar with fine arts, but some of you maybe are not. So I'm just going to give a little bit of blurb of what it is, and then I'm going to showcase our students that did participate. So fine arts is basically there's over 1,200 pe people that participated, and there's so many different categories, and it's where these young Adults are able to use their different talents that God has called them to do, whether it's vocal singing, there's human video, there's Christian rap, there's short sermon, there's photography. And so it's being able to give these young adults ability to build on the talents that God has given them. And they compete once a year at Southwestern Assembly of God. And then they get to showcase what God is doing in their lives to continue to build on it. So we had three youth participate this year, and we are so excited and honored for them to be able to step up and be brave to be able to do this. So we had Samuel, who's not with us today, but he did male vocal senior, and um, he sang an old hymn that the judges said showcased his voice beautifully. And what he sang was, Be Thou My Vision. Wow. So he did a wonderful job on that, and we are so proud of him. I don't know about you, but at 15, there is no way I could stand up and sing all by myself in front of a bunch of judges and audience. <laughs> so then we also had Hannah, and Hannah has her picture up here. She participated in Digital Photography Junior. And so part of this is where they have to take a picture, they have to edit it, they have to tell the judges what tools did they use, what software did they use, and what their inspiration was behind their picture. So 
they can't see it over here. You can show them your picture over here. I want to tell you what her inspiration behind this is because I just feel like it's so profound. So her explanation of inspiration was the inspiration for this piece was rugged beauty. Finding beauty in the middle of hard, rough times is really what the last year has been about. So the captures of the different textures of the paving stones and then the beautiful flower just delicately placed in the middle. And then we had Keith who he participated in short sermon and this is where they have a five minute time limit. So I know this congregation is full of professors and preachers and for you to think about preparing a sermon and using scripture and execute it in five minutes. And so Keith, um, <laughs> Keith did this and um, he did a great job yes, he did. and his topic was the Great Commission and which I also, one of the judges had also said that it's very timely in the world that we're going through right now. So all three of them got excellent ratings and I could not be any prouder of them and how hard that they worked and used the talents that God has given them. So if you guys could just stand to your feet and just celebrate them because they deserve it. Thank you. Thank you, Rebecca. It's awesome. We, uh, we pastors better start uh, worrying a little bit. These kids start preaching five-minute sermons, we'll lose our job. <laughs> I did take time to listen to Keith's sermon online, and he did excellent. I'm going to have him do it here on a Sunday morning. That won't be the only sermon that day now, I tell you. (laughs) We're delighted to see you today. Karen and I are glad to be back home. We, uh, I thought I was going to have to fill out a guest card. We've missed so many Sundays. That's not typical of us. You can count on one hand how many Sundays I've missed over illness. And I missed three Sundays here, so maybe, uh, well, we won't wonder why. Maybe age is catching up. <laughs> but we're, we're glad to be home. We had a nice visit with my mom. And uh, we're glad to be back in Texas. Open your Bibles to John chapter 14. We welcome all of you today. If you're a guest, thank for worship, worshiping with us. And if you're watching us, and we know there are, uh, if you're watching us on the Internet, thank you for joining us. I like what First Baptist Church of Dallas calls their internet. They call it the iCampus. I like that. So welcome to the iCampus this morning. I want to talk to you today about the power encounter that produces action. I've ministered to you two weeks ago on the encounter that empowers. And I talked about the church of power. And I challenged us to begin to move in the power of the Holy Spirit. When we're full of Holy Spirit, we have a fresh power that's beyond our own natural abilities and our own physical abilities. The power of Holy Spirit, uh, a good example of that is Peter, after he is uh, filled with Holy Spirit, comes to the gate uh, where the man is, or the temple where the man is begging. And Peter looks at him and says, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus rise and walk. And the man leaped to his feet. And Peter didn't have that kind of power and that kind of strength before. And God is looking for a church today that will walk in the Spirit and be filled with the Spirit all the time. Holy Spirit infilling is not for Sunday only. We should walk in the Spirit every day of our life, being led by the Spirit. And so there are many times we have encounters that mark our lives. Some of you, as I said that sentence, remember meeting someone that had an impact on you. 
or meeting someone that was very famous or something and you vividly recall that incident and what it did for you. Close and chance encounters that uh, often change our lives. Uh, it was not a chance encounter that Zacchaeus met Jesus. How many of you remember the story of little Zacchaeus? He was one of those short guys. He made up for it by being an IRS agent. That'll, that'll uh, equalize you real quick. He couldn't even see through the crowd. He climbs up a sycamore tree, and it wasn't really a chance encounter because Jesus knew he was in the tree. And he stops and looks up and calls him by his name. He must have been an infamous IRS agent. Either that or Jesus knew something. And he calls him by his name and says, come down out of that tree. I'm going to your house today. There's nothing like inviting yourself into someone's life. But it totally changed Zacchaeus. Because he said, what I've done wrong, I'm going to go back and repay and give back. And it wasn't just a chance encounter. In John chapter 14... Verse 31. Would you read it with me? I want to hear you now. But that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandments, so I do. Arise, let us go from here. I want to take that last phrase. Arise, and let us go from here. Arise, And let us go from here. There comes a time in our lives when we have to take different positions on certain issues. It is in Exodus chapter 33. Israel had been camped around Mount Sinai and God told them it was time to move on. Now Mount Sinai was an important place. There they saw the glory of God in lightning and in thunder. They witnessed a cloud consuming the mountain. They saw that Moses met with God on that mountain. And they saw that Moses received the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai. It's a place of historical and spiritual significance. Why not stay there? Wow, this is the place of revelation. Let me stop and say some of us have spent a lifetime living in a place we remember. We remember the great things that happened. We remember the revelation we had. And we stay there and stay there and stay there. But it's funny, when God spoke to Moses and said, get up, it's time to move from here. Why did God want him to move from there? Many of us spend all of our lives remembering what God has done in the past. I love to be reminded of the past. I love to remember the miracles and things that we saw. I love to remember the stories of old and the things that have happened. But often we get stuck in the past and never see anything in our present or in our future. You cannot continue to live in the past. (coughs) Can I say that again? You cannot continue to live in the past. Look at somebody and say, he's talking about you. Well, maybe not. (coughs) I I don't know, having been in this my whole life, I can't tell you how many people that I've met, encountered, pastored, who were living 20 years ago, 40 years ago. And you can't build a church with those kind of people. Y'all want me to go back on vacation? You can't even build a Sunday school class on those kind of people. Because they're always way back here. You've heard the saying, you know, the rearview mirror is smaller than the windshield for a purpose. And there's so many of us that we live in those revelations of the past. We live in those experiences of the past. I could stand here all morning and tell you of experiences that God's allowed me to walk through. They're wonderful. They're marvelous. But I need something fresh and new today. 
I need something that encourages and changes me today. And God told Israel, said, it's time for you to get up and leave from here. Amen. Look at somebody and say, don't get stuck in the past. Why did God tell Israel to leave, leave Mount Sinai? Doesn't it make sense to stay there? They probably should have built a temple there or maybe erected the tabernacle, left it right there because it would have shown the whole world. This is where it all happened. We are great at memorializing situations, circumstances, and events. And what it does, it reduces expectation. That's worth writing down in the margin of your Bible. It reduces expectation. Why did God want them to move from Sinai? Because he said, I've got something better for you. I've got, I want to show you another side of me. I want to give you a new experience. I want you to be able to sow in a land that's your land. And that's, it's a land full of giants and walled cities. But I'm going to give you victory and I'm going to give you grace. He wanted to continue showing himself as Jehovah Jireh, the provider. God, sometime there comes a time when God says, manna no longer works. It's time to get your own food. Let me stop and tell you one of my pet peeves. If you ever leave this church, which you're crazy if you do. Some of the finest people I've ever pastored. But if you ever leave this church, don't come tell me, well, I'm just not getting fed. (laughs) What's wrong? Belly up to the bar. Come on. This is a smorgasbord. I'll never forget my son-in-law calling me one day. They were youth pastors in another state. And he said, they'd been there about three months. And he said, Pastor... I don't, he was raised in our church, so he never did call me dad. He always called me pastor. And he said, pastor, he said, I am so dry. I am so dead. He said, this man cannot preach. (laughs) And he said, I'm not getting anything. Well, he wanted me to sympathize with him. So I said, Kyle, let me ask you a question. Do you believe the Lord sent you there? Oh, I know he did. Are you seeing results with the youth? Yeah. I said, well, you know, someday you'll probably have your own ministry beyond youth. You'll probably pastor a church. Who's going to feed you then? You can't expect every Sunday to be the only meal you have. If we can see ourselves spiritually, there aren't too many obese ones. That's why John said, Beloved, I would above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers. And I said, Son, you're going to have to develop your own feeding. You've got to have time with God. You've got to get in the Word. You have have to have a time of prayer and study every day. Some of us, the only time we pray is the few moments we pray on Sunday mornings. Some of us, the only Bible we get is what's shown on the screen. Come on. Look at somebody and say, this is good preaching. Our journey in this spiritual life should never reach a plateau. And some of us are spiritually in the same place we were years ago. Are we growing spiritually? Are we getting new revelation from God? I try to read this Bible every day. Every day. And some of it I've read so much that I can almost remember what I'm reading. But never does a day go by that something new doesn't jump off the page at me. It may be a word. It may be a phrase. It may be a whole whatever, but it it comes up and it begins to teach me. And I prayed, dear God, help me never to become so much of a Christian that I can't continue to learn and grow in Christ every day. Many of our churches plateau because we live at Sinai. 
We live at that one experience that brought us there or that kept us there. And we stay when God's saying, I've got something new to reveal to you. Why is it that most of us know what's going to happen every service? Hmm. Yeah, we're going to sing three or four courses. Somebody's going to get up and lead us in prayer. We're going to shake hands. Peter's going to do a funny video on the announcements. And then Don's going to sing or somebody. And then the preacher's going to preach. Wouldn't it be awesome if we walked in here one Sunday morning and none of that happened? Now, we always have an order of services because I believe in planning. But we always say, Holy Spirit, we want you to come and do what's necessary today. I can remember services where the Spirit of God fell and people jump up and run to the altars. People healed during praise and worship, saved during praise and worship. But I can't live back there. My spirit cries out, God, I want to see it today in 2021. I believe that Jesus is about to come again. And the church needs to be on fire. The church needs to be full of Holy Spirit. The church needs to be dynamic. And I can tell you, I speak to you prophetically. The day's coming when you're not going to be able to predict what happens in a service. Wouldn't it be awesome if the glory of God would come? Just settle over the house. And suddenly somebody leaps to their feet and begins to holler, I've been healed. I've been healed. Suddenly someone gets up and runs to the altar and they give their life to Jesus Christ. You see, God wants us to move from where we are because he's got something else to show us. He's got something else to give us. There's a new revelation that God wants to bring to your heart and to your life. There's a new experience. You haven't experienced it all. You have not experienced it all. God's got something new and fresh. Eye has not seen. Ear has not heard. Neither has it entered the heart of man. What God has in store for his people. Let's move on. Look at somebody and say, let's move on. Preacher, 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 preacher. I wanted to get into the spirit of every one of us. Paul said, forgetting those things which are behind us. Now, it's okay to remember. I can preach a sermon on remembrance. You know, God had them put stones up so they'd remember that they crossed Jordan here. There's always been times of, but remembrance should build faith for the future. But many of us, our remembrance leaves us right there. You know, I think the spiritual experiences we have is sort of like gas in the tank of your car. If you leave it sitting in the garage, it's not going to do anything. But if you drive, Everywhere you drive, you got less gas. And by the way, gas is getting more expensive every day. Thank you, Joe Biden. <laughs> that wasn't political. That was a fact. <laughs> we don't have to live like we always live. We no longer have to tolerate what God has given us power to change. Are you listening to me? The God you serve is an awesome God. Ephesians 3.20 said he is able to do exceedingly and abundantly. And above all, you can even ask or think according to that power that works inside of you. God wants us to move to a place of power and dominance in our area. He intends for us to help lead others to a place of victory and blessing. There are revelations we have yet to see. There are victories that we have yet to witness. There are heights of authority that we have yet to walk in. There are healings and deliverances that we have yet to accomplish. There's much more to God than you and I have experienced thus far. In John 14, the disciples are promised things that are beyond our comprehension. He said, I've got a mansion prepared for you in my father's house. 
He talks about in John 14, the revelation of the Father. Are you getting new revelations of God, who he is and how awesome he is? I appreciate the Sunday school class where we're studying Job. You'll never understand everything that's happening there. But one revelation we're finding is God is God. And he doesn't have to make excuses for being God. He doesn't have to justify himself to us for being God. God is God. He's not your buddy. He'll be closer to you than a friend. He's not your genie in a bottle. He's God. He's God. He's God. There are new prayers to be answered. God wants to show you. There are new promises of the comforter to help you and strengthen you. <clears throat> There's new promises of the indwelling of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. There's a gift of peace that he says we can walk in. And if you ever needed peace, today's a day when we need peace. Jesus said to his disciples, arise, let's go from here. Why not stay and enjoy the new revelation? Because God has something better. Can I say that again? God has something better. I remember great miraculous healings. I remember great moves of God and revivals. I was in a little church last Sunday that we could have put in this section and the building probably doesn't quite fit this. It was packed with people. Packed. You couldn't hardly find a seat. When they sang, the minute they started singing, I felt the presence of God like I haven't felt in a long time. It was so loud in there you couldn't hardly think. Man, that would offend some of us. Come on. Go to Home Depot, get a ladder, and get over it. Presence of God begin to move through the building. And I recognize it's not the building. It's not the people. Most of the people I was looking at, some of them were simple. I don't mean that in a derogatory fashion. It didn't look to me like anybody had anything to speak of. But boy, they had a presence of God. And I thought this is what I long for every day of my life. I want to walk with Jesus. I want his presence to come and consume my life. I want to live on the edge of revelation. We could talk all day about what used to be. We just think what God has in store for what's going to be. And what is today? In the last days, said the Lord, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Look at somebody and say, I'm all flesh. See, God has something better for us. He's got something better for the drug addict. He's got something better for the prostitute. He's got something better for the lonely. He's got something better for that one who's wrapped up in alcohol. He's got something better for that one who's wandering around, wondering what can I do with my life. He's got something better for that one who's, committed, who's thinking about committing suicide. He's got something better. And listen, he's got something better not only for our world. He's got something better for his church. Waves of glory, I believe, are going to begin to consume God's people. The outpouring of the Spirit is going to send a hunger in lives. I say, as Jesus said, arise and let us go from here. That same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives in us. And power of Almighty God lives in us. And Jesus said, in my name, you shall lay hands on the sick and they probably will recover. 
they shall recover. In my name, he said, you shall cast out devils. In my name, the name of Jesus is still powerful. Powerful. There's more for us to experience than we've ever seen or we've ever heard. That's why Peter looked at the guy at the temple gate. He says, look on us. <laughs> Silver and gold have I none. I'm broke, but I got something you need. In the name of Jesus, Christ of Nazareth, rise up, walk. Don't be afraid to use the name of Jesus. When you do, use the name Jesus of Nazareth, Son of God. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to tackle impossible things. I'll never forget an evangelist come to church one time. Didn't really know him, and I should have checked him out. Yeah. He did okay Sunday morning and Sunday night he's going to pray for healings and miracles and and I watched him and he was growing legs and things and a lot of that's truth and a lot of that's manipulation. And uh, faith was arising in the house. I had a lady in the congregation whose hand was like this from polio. She couldn't stretch it out at all. She was like that from childhood. And I saw her as tears were streaming down her face and faith was strong as she stood and ran down that aisle holding that arm up. And the man says, ma'am, I have an anointing for backs and I have an anointing for legs, but I don't have an anointing to pray for that. But nevertheless, I'm going to pray for you. I fired him that night. I said, sir, I cannot afford to be a specialist. I said, I have to pray for headaches, toe aches, sick dogs, you name it. I said, my God is a good God. And what you did is you destroyed the faith of that woman. She had faith for healing that night, but you discounted her faith. And you thought you had the answer when Jesus was always the answer. He says, well, you're young, you're inexperienced, and you don't quite understand. And so I'll tell you why you pray for me. In the meantime, here's your check. We don't need excuses. Look at somebody, it's time to get past excuses. Say it. Either God can or he can't. My Bible says he can. My Bible says he will. All of us believe in healing, but we're not all sure it's going to apply to us. Well, maybe this is one of my burdens that I have to walk through of life. Paul had a thorn in the flesh. And <laughs> let's stop making excuses and let's move from here. Let's move from rationalization. Jesus said, if you have faith like that of a grain of a mustard seed. Jesus said, if you come to me like little children. Boy, my grandbabies come into my house. They know Papa's got ice cream in the freezer. And they don't say, Papa, if you can find it in your omnipotent will today. Would you help me with some ice cream? I know you're able, but whatever. Papa, can I have some ice cream? I could say, well, I'm not sure there's any. I know there's some in there, Papa. I've already looked. <laughs> you sure can. You can have it. It's time for us to arise move on. Look at somebody say, rise and move on. 
Don't camp where you last saw the glory. Don't camp where you last experienced something great and wonderful and mighty. Remember it, but arise and go on. Stand to your feet. Well, Keith, it wasn't five minutes, but it wasn't that long. (laughs) Bow your heads. Is there anyone here this morning that you're not in right relationship with God? And you want to make him Lord and Savior of your life complete today. Would you just slip a hand up where I can see you? Anyone in the building? Anyone in the building? All right. Look at me. Everybody, you can look up now. You know why most of us in church don't see the greatness of God? Because the church is filled with unbelief. And the word unbelief means it's something I un believed I used to believe it but I don't anymore we as the people of God have to believe that he is you can't get anywhere if you don't believe he exists you must believe that he is and that he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him there are new experiences There are new revelations. I love for the day when every service somebody comes to me and says, Pastor, let me tell you about a dream I had. Let me tell you about a vision I had. God showed me this. God showed me that. Let me tell you about a revelation I saw while I was reading the Bible. I love to see some of your Facebook posts because I know you're doing devotions. I see your devotions. Thank God for that. You're never going to have greater revelation if you don't put yourself in a position receive from God it's time for us to arise and go forward let's not be a church that is stuck at Sinai let's be a church like the book of Acts wouldn't it be something if you were translated in the spirit to another place like Philip and you led someone to the Lord oh I wouldn't talk about that people think you're weird I was in I was in Africa and they told me a story of one of their pastors God spoke to him he said I want you to go to a certain country he said Lord I don't have any money what am I going to do? He said, pack your bag and go to the airport. He packed his bag and went to the airport. And he's standing in the ticket line, you know, to get a ticket. And he's thinking all along, well, surely, you know, God will have somebody come up and pay for me a ticket. But he got to the window and nobody had come up. So he had to step aside and he said, Lord, what do I do now? And the Lord said, take your bag, go to the restroom. He took his bag. He said, now what? He said, go inside that stall right there. Set your bag down. He went in, closed the door of the stall. And the Lord said, now, open the door and do what I told you to do. He opened the door. He was in the other state. He said, wow, I don't know if those things happen anymore. Ezekiel was caught up in the spirit. Philip was caught up in the spirit. My God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, if you got the money to buy a ticket, buy the ticket. Come on. How many of you really want a new experience? You want to walk in a new power? If you're like that and you're hungry for it, come stand here with me. Come on, it's still early. Come stand here in the altar with me. Say, I want to move forward. I want to arise. And I want a new experience. I want new revelations. I want new power. I want more of God. I hunger for fresh.
touch. When you get here, lift your hands. An act of surrender to God. Begin to tell God what you want. He said, if you hunger and thirst, you shall be filled. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God, in Jesus' name. Touch your people now, Lord. You said in the last days there'll be a hunger that comes through the land, not for silver or gold, but for bread, the word of God. We've heard the word of God this morning. We heard your word say, arise and go. I pray right now for fresh revelation and a fresh touch and a fresh anointing. May boldness rise upon us and may fear leave in the name of Jesus. May unbelief depart in the name of Jesus. May great grace, great anointing begin to flow over your congregation in Jesus' name. Here we are, Lord. We can do nothing in ourselves. We can do nothing without your touch. We trust in you. You, O oh Lord, are what makes it happen. Are you willing to set aside your pride? Are you willing to set aside the things that you hope to appear to look a little crazy to the world but look perfectly normal to me? Are you willing to set your pride aside to look a little insane? For doing what the world thinks is crazy, but stepping out into what I believe, that is what I'm looking for. That is what I'm hoping you walk into. By taking steps today, and the steps you will take, you will follow my path. If you have to consciously and willingly give up those things that you hold so dear. Look crazy. Sound insane. But I'm telling you, it is in order. I have ordered you to do it. We're not crazy. It is in my will. Throw away your pride. Come on, lift your hands and receive the word of the Lord. <clears throat> we receive your word, Lord. Your challenge to us. With your grace, we will be bold. With your grace, we will attempt the impossible. With your grace and your presence, we will arise and go. Change us. Change the way we think, Lord. Help us. Help us to change the way we think. Your kingdom come. Your will be done in our lives. For Jesus' sake. Jesus, you said you'd build your church and you said it would be a glorious church. You said the things you've seen me do, greater things than these shall you do. May the greater things begin to grasp, grab hold of our spirit. May the greater things we lay pride aside we lay fear aside. We pray for boldness. We pray for sensitive ears to hear what the Spirit said. Your word said, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says. We pray for ears to hear. And on our eyes with salve that we may see. Touch our hearts. Give us a heart of flesh and a heart that's right toward you. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Now the scripture I read to you demands an action. Demands an action. It says, arise and go from here. You're comfortable in here. Karen and I yesterday had to go to Amarillo for the funeral of one of my aunts. I'm going to tell you, that drive is like the other side of the world. It's only six hours, but it's the longest six hours. 
And I'm at the funeral home. We're about to leave, or at the church. And I think, boy, I wish I was home. You can wish all you want. But I had to get in that car and put it in gear and drive. Come on. Look at somebody and say, we got to put it in gear and drive. I, I, I like watching the, the car shows on cable where they build hot rods. You're looking at a hot rod fanatic. If you ever want to really bless me, buy me a hot rod. And they always start them up and they rev them. I love the sound of power. We used to call them glass packs. I had loud ones on my GTO. I'd go down the street and I'd let it rack back. But I watch them as they always get in it and rev it up. Don't tell me how much power you have. Don't let me hear how much power you think you have. Put it in gear. Look at somebody and say, put it in gear. Arise and go. I think you got it. In this box are hundreds of names of loved ones, family, people that are neighbors, kinfolk, enemies, people that need Jesus. Would you extend your hand toward this? Would you pray with me for their salvation? Lord, in Jesus' name, we believe for the impossible. We believe we can pray a prayer and your spirit can touch them. I pray right now, God, that everyone that's in this, in this box will be saved. We pray that not one would perish. We give you glory and honor and thanks for the many who've already been saved out of this box. Thank you for it. We thank you for the testimonies of your salvation. But we believe that all of them are going to be saved. So we commit them into your hands, knowing whom we have believed and knowing that we are persuaded that you are able to do exceedingly and abundantly and above all we could even ask or think. Thank you for it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Well, raise your right hand. May God bless you. May his presence overshadow you. May his challenge of his Holy Spirit cause you to rise up and go. May a rise up and go spirit settle over you. We cannot stay the same, and we will not stay the same. God has something better for us. May God bless you and prosper you physically spiritually, emotionally, financially, and relationally. I bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I love you. See you later.